Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Futurist, your one-stop shop for science, history, politics, and all things related to the world of tomorrow. Our modern world has been built on science, from our medical technologies built through biology, to our materials built through chemistry, and to our space stations built through physics. There is no doubt that our future will be built on the foundation of science as well. While thousands of scientists have contributed to humanity's knowledge base over the years, a few of them have been exceptionally important in advancing humankind. Today, me and Jerry will be ranking each of our subjective top 10 scientists based on their contrib- contributions to both science and society, as well as how difficult th- their discoveries were. So do you want to start off? Yeah, so for number 10, I put James Clerk Maxwell, who was a Scottish physicist whose like, most famous bodies of work revolve around the idea of electromagnetic radiation. And so Maxwell famously built a theory uh, which describes electricity, light, and magnetism as all essentially like different components of the same like ultimate phenomenon, uh, which would be electromagnetic radiation. And he proved this with a series of famous equations uh, called Maxwell's equations. And uh, he also like famously predicted radio waves like long before they were actually discovered. And his ideas really laid the groundwork for much of the modern field of electrical engineering. And uh, besides all this work in physics, he also worked in chemistry with his Max- Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions describing the kinetic theory of gases. And his contributions to modern science are just tremendous. Like Einstein famously said, uh, he didn't stand on the shoulders of Newton, he stood on the shoulders of Maxwell. Yeah, so uh, Maxwell is definitely an impressive scientist. I have him a bit higher in the list at uh, number seven, I think. But, uh, yeah, respectable position. So, at number 10, I have Mary, Mary Curie. So, she was a Polish scientist uh, who, won the, who won two Nobel Prizes for discovering polonium and radium, as well as uh, the concept of radioactivity. So, she was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize in science, as well as the f- uh, first scientists to win two Nobel Prizes in two different fields. Uh, her, she also, after discovering radioactivity, she also worked to uh, try to solve tumors using radioactivity. So some research in the medical field as well. Uh, the remarkable thing about her is that like, as a woman in the late, uh, 1800s and like early 1900s she uh she had a really impressive discovery uh which is like the radioactivity is like a difficult phenomenon to discover so and uh that's why i put her in the top 10 list uh her discovery does have some significance as well as as i mentioned in like medical industry uh radioactivity can be used to uh treat tumors so yeah, that's true. Uh, Curie, I didn't include Curie on my list, but she is definitely an extremely just both for her breadth of work as well as her like achievements at a time when women like in most countries do not even have the right to vote. And I do believe she was like the first woman to win a Nobel Prize as well. And then for number nine, uh, you said Mendel, and I said uh, uh, Pasteur. You want to start? Yeah. So. Louis Pasteur, I have him a lot higher on the list, but uh, for number nine, I have Gregory Mendel. So Mendel was a monk. He did try to get into a like institution of uh, science, like with the college, but it was rejected in the beginning. However, he still had a significant con- contribution to like humanity's knowledge and science through founding the field of genetics. Uh, so he basically just experimented long term on a, a bunch of like pea plants, discovered the phenomena of uh, dominant and recessive alleles, discovered the law of uh, se- segregation and independent assortment in genetics. So he has a whole branch of genetics named after him called the Men- Mendelian uh, genetics. Uh, his, his work was not accepted until much later on. It was like ahead of his time. For like 50 60 years 
because uh, nobody would would accept his work until then. When they uh, separately like this disco- discovered the same phenomenon and started to believe in it, and uh, yeah, so it also has a lot of significance because, as we know now, genetics is an important tool in understanding like genetic diseases, as well as just like where we came from and uh, how our body functions. So he basically created an entire field in biology, which is slowly become one of the most important ones today so that's why i include them number nine all right so like uh mandela is definitely impressive but i would have a question for you like do you think that uh like that mandela's discoveries were like that difficult to the extent that like few people could like else could have done it like i feel like generally like i feel like the hard work he put in uh only a few other people would have uh would have put that much effort in it because he experimented with pea plants over the period of like 20 30 years uh really was really observant and uh recorded every single piece of data he had he performed a bunch of experiments on those pea plants uh try to even explain like uh, try to selectively breed them for like different uh alleles to come up and recorded all of them and uh, he, he had, like, no, for, like, formal higher education as well because he was rejected from a college. So it was it was really impressive that he, like, es- statistically analyzed all these alleles to find his laws of segregation and independent assortment. That's why I have him in the top 10. Yeah, it's a good point. His, like, persistent experimentation was, like, pretty impressive. Then for number nine, I said Louis Pasteur. He was a French chemist and biologist who not only saved millions of lives due to his work in microbiology, but he also like forever changed like the field of science. He was one of the most influential people in medicine of all time. Uh, he developed vaccines for anthrax, rabies, cholera, and other diseases. He also developed a method of pasteurization to eliminate dangerous microbes from milk and other liquids that saved millions of lives. And uh, he also disproved the idea of spontaneous generation, which was like an idea that was very common back then. That like living beings, especially like microbes or bacteria. They can just arise out of nothing without being descended from anything. And so Pasteur like disproved that, replacing it with the germ theory of disease, which says that like all these microbes, they're descended from other microbes. And this was extremely important to future developments and future discoveries in biology. And overall, he was just a very important scientist in history. Yeah, so uh Yeah, I have Pasteur a lot higher on the list. I'll explain why later. Uh it kind of has to do with his imp- with the impact of his work. But uh, at number eight, I have Antoine Lavoisier. Uh, he was he was a French scientist, basically like the father of chemistry, who uh, discovered the element oxygen. Actually, like he, like he described the role of oxygen in combustion, and also like discovered redox reactions through that. Uh, he discovered the element carbon, uh, and described how like diamond, like charcoal, all those different like types of carbon are different types of the same element uh he also had some research on hydrogen uh and also coining the name hydrogen he was one of the people who developed the metric system uh he he was the first one to write a uh like a whole list of elements that like scientists like Mendeleev used later on to build a periodic table he helped reform nomenclature and chemistry predicted the element silicon uh and uh also discovered fixed or what we call what we now call co2 or carbon dioxide he also had some like like his experimental methods became like common protocol in the chemistry research he kind of discovered the conservation of energy uh through like stoichiometry because like he discovered that the amount before and after a reaction were, were the same he also kind of discovered calorimetry because uh, he discovered like that when uh, matter changes the state that we're phased from like liquid to like solid to like gas or whatever, the mass would stay the same. So like his body of research basically includes uh, most of modern uh, chemistry, even like acids and bases. So that's why I call him the father of chemistry and put him at number eight. Yeah, I have a uh, Lavoisier a bit higher as well. So I'll explain that when we get when I get to him. But at number eight, I have Michael Faraday. Uh, he was a scientist who worked heavily in both electrochemistry and electromagnetism. 
He discovered a lot of important principles, including those of electrolysis, electromagnetic induction, and diamagnetism. And his work was extremely influential on many electricity-based inventions that we like you have in society right now. And so I would argue that his work is all is like the foundation for our modern world, just like run on totally on electricity. And aside from this, he was also influential as a chemist. He discovered the compound benzene, and he made an early version of the famous Bunsen burner. Another reason I put him so high is he was extremely prolific as a scientist. He made a huge amount of theories and work, and he was exp- extremely influential on a lot of the scientists who came after him too. And like for example, Einstein had a picture of Faraday on his wall, so like he influenced a lot of modern science. So I put him pretty high. Uh yeah, so for like the same reasons you mentioned, I kind of have him a, a bit higher in the list, but I, I'll explain when we get there. But uh, for number seven, uh, I have someone who you previously mentioned, uh, James Clark Maxwell. So the reason why I'm having higher is because uh, I believe uh his joining of electricity and magnetism into one concept and relating into like electromagnetic radiation and light deserves him this spot it's basically the, like the foundation of uh modern physics even though einstein is uh, like credited as the person who basically like founded modern physics i think the credit should go to james clark maxwell because uh even like as you as you mentioned einstein used his uh, body of work for his like special relativity and everything else uh also uh he yeah he basically like said light is electromagnetic radiation by discovering that the speed of light is the same as the speed of electromagnetic electromagnetic radiation he predicted radio waves as you mentioned uh his work in the kinetic theory of gases and stuff as you mentioned is pretty important as well one thing that uh you didn't mention that i, kind of, that I thought was like really interesting is that he presented the like first color photo photograph and proposed the R- idea of rgb like using red green and blue like filters to create a color or picture and uh as as we all know he has the famous maxwell equations uh where he basically like joins all all of the magnet magnetic and electric equations into one body and kind of reforms one of them accounting for the displacement current and uh another uh in another thing he did is that he this, uh, he proposed c- control theory, which is pretty significant in engineering. So just because of how much his work was used later on, I have him this high. I also read that like uh, among physicists who ranked, who were the greatest physicists of all time, uh, they ranked uh, Maxwell number third, only behind Einstein and Newton. So uh, his respect within his own field is pretty significant. So that's why I have him a bit higher. Uh, so yeah, Maxwell is definitely like very impressive, and uh, like you said, that his like discovery that electricity and magnetism and light are like similar is considered one of the greatest unifications in physics. Like similar to the unifications made by uh, like uh, Newton, and so Maxwell is like the reason I didn't put him that high is because I feel like his discoveries weren't as influential on like the modern world as other people on the list. Like, his discovery is very important in the field of physics, but, uh, like, his contributions to society were, like, not as a major, in my opinion. Yeah, but, uh, one of our, like, ranking, ranking categories was, like, how difficult their discoveries were, so that's the reason we're having that high. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so, for my number seven, I said Charles Darwin. Uh, he really needs no introduction. His theory of evolution changed not only biology or even science, totally revolutionized humanity. Uh, his idea of evolution fundamentally challenged one of the church's core tenets, and it sent shockwaves throughout the world, influencing many social movements as well. And the idea of evolution pretty much created an entirely new field of biology. Darwin was also influential in geology, uh, was a big supporter of Lyell's theory of gradual geologic change. He was pretty known in botany and made a lot of discoveries regarding plants as well. Darwin wrote two books, The Origin of Species and The Descent of Man, which are considered two of the greatest science books ever written. Even though their ideas are like now commonly known, they're still read today. And uh, I didn't put Darwin as high as you because I feel like evolution was already in the making by the time he discovered it. Then for uh, number six. Oh yeah, number six. So I put a 
Archimedes. So Archimedes was an inventor and mathematician in the Greek era, who was incredibly influential due to his work in many areas of math. And he created a phenomenally accurate approximation of pi, like uh, I think it was like within like 0.05 percent of the of our modern estimations. And he developed a system of exponents that we largely still use today to describe very large numbers, which is like incredibly influential in all fields of science. And he proved a vast amount of geometrical theorems. And uh, in physics, he made the law of buoyancy, which is uh, like pretty important. And he made the law of the center of gravity. And aside from all of this, Archimedes was also a prolific inventor. Like much of the work of the Renaissance was developed using math that Archimedes proved. So like I consider him to deserve a high spot on this list just due to his like his influence on a lot of European science and math. Yeah. Uh. So Archimedes is really impressive as well. In my own list, I had him at number eleven, so he barely missed that on on my top ten list. So the uh, as you mentioned, he he kind of basically anticipated modern calculus by using like infinitely small calculations to derive the area of a circle, like surface area on volume of a sphere, area of an ellipse, uh, and even like revolutions of parabolas and uh, hyperbolas. He had some research in astronomy. Uh, he's credited for, like, finding infinite series, approximated pi, as you mentioned. Uh, even exponentiation, he kind of started it. His physics discoveries were, uh, why I had him that high in the list. Uh, hydrostatics, buoyancy, the law of Archimedes, center of gravity, and his inventions, such as, uh, like, uh, for his, his war inventions, such as, uh, like, some really big pulleys, screw pump, claws that, like, picked ships off the sea uh he had like some really large reflectors that uh focused light on ships to burn them but uh, the reason why i had him didn't have in my top 10 is because a lot of his research was in 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 the mathematics field so i have like as a math- mathematician uh it's probably like top three of all time in my opinion just because of like how early his discoveries were but uh like as a scientist i i consider his law of buoyancy and like center of gravity and stuff as uh his contributions to science so that's why he was at my number one yeah i would argue that like his contributions in in math like affected a lot of future contributions in science though a lot of people mostly a lot of like inventions that's why i put him higher yeah that's uh i agree with that because math is the like foundation of science but still yeah it's like the language of science as people say and then uh number six Oh yeah, what was your number six? Okay, at number six, I had Faraday. Uh, so I, I put him a bit higher than you. Uh, like the really significant thing about Faraday is that he had no formal education and like limited knowledge of math. Like, he did not even know like trigonometry, but he still discovered some really, really, uh, like difficult phenomena, such as uh, the electromagnetic field, diamagnetism, induction. Uh, he just kind of discovered that light is related to electromagnetism. He had a lot of electrolysis, as you mentioned. Uh, and but like the reason why I have him that high is because of his in- inventions. So he invented basically the first generator, which is like uh, one of the foundations of modern infrastructure in our world today. Just because we need electricity for like everything now. Uh, he created the bicycle uh, dynamo. Kind of created the um, electric motor, like the first electric motor, which is also really significant in our world today. Uh, as as we even like use like electric vehicles now. He created like Faraday's balance, Faraday's cage. Has a bunch of other stuff uh, in electricity, as you mentioned. Even in chemistry, as you do, as you mentioned, he discovered benzene, and did some research on chlorine, uh, benson burners. He had like the first oxidation numbers written down. And uh, he he coined the terms ion, electrode, cathode, anode. So, just because of how like important his uh, his inventions of generator and electric motor became later on, I have him at, no- at my number six, a bit higher than you. It's really interesting. I wasn't. I didn't know that uh, he made so many inventions. It's very uh, interesting that a lot of these like uh, scientists who work mostly in like academic settings, like a lot of them are very good with like handwork as well. Yeah. And then uh 
number five, I had Lavoisier. I put him a bit higher than you. So uh, my logic behind this was like Lavoisier, like his con he basically like created the modern field of chemistry. Like he made the naming system, which we've like used for like three hundred years after him, and like he developed like very heavily the metric system, which we've used like uh like it's basically the standard system of measurements nowadays. And like he also developed the law of conservation of mass. Uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned that. That's like one of the fundamental principles of uh, stoichiometry and like chemistry in general. And like we honestly was influential in biology and like he developed the idea of oxygen combustion, which is like extremely important and not just in chemistry but in like many inventions as well. So yeah, I consider him to be a uh, like pretty important just for his like work in chemistry. Yeah, so uh I had him a bit lower just because uh he was caught a couple times trying to like steal other people's discoveries and like making it making it his own. And also because uh he did basically uh his research did include like the whole base of what later became chemistry. But there was there was also like some other uh notable uh, chemistry scientists such as like Henry C Cavendish who are like very underrated and uh, their discoveries were also significant to the foundation of chemistry so that's why I had him a bit lower but yeah originally I had him at my number three but uh, later on I kind of was uh, convinced to put him lower at number eight. That's interesting I didn't know that he like stole credit for other people's inventions and a fun yeah. fact about Lavoisier uh, he ended up getting guillotined in the French Revolution oh, for yeah. being like a member, an aristocrat. Yeah. <laughs> then okay, your number five was Darwin. I think. Yeah. It's so, been yeah, a bit higher than me. At number five, I have Charles Darwin. So, uh, just because uh, his theory of evolution through natural selection, I believe, was. Uh, one of the most revolutionary scientific ideas ever uh, ever uh, proposed and pro perhaps the most like revolutionary in terms of like society not just not science itself but society because uh, it basically like challenged the idea of where we came from like it challenged the idea of creation creationism and kind of lowered the power of religion in later society because uh because his ideas were used to describe where humans came from. Like, uh, that we share a common ancestor with monkeys. That, like, we are animals as well. And, uh, but, uh, one of the other reasons why I'm that high is because evolution is, like, one of the most significant branches of biology today. Uh, every new organism or anything that's, that's discovered will try to, like, map its evolutionary history. Even, like, prehistoric animals like dinosaurs will try to map the evolutionary history. Uh, we use this idea of common ancestors for pretty much everything now. So he basically answered one of the most fundamental questions of like where uh, animals and us and like plants and everything comes from and that how much related are we to each other? Like uh, me as a human and the banana plant and the chimpanzee and the lion, like how much, how much do we relate? To what degree? Where, where was the time where we like deviated? So he also had some like research in other fields, like uh, geology. When he was abor aboard the HMS Beagle, his famous ship, where he went around the world for five years, uh, looking for evidence from like the Galapagos I Islands and everything else, from like turtles to like finches and stuff. Uh, so he has some, yeah, he has some discoveries in geology uh, about plants and animals as well. However, like one of the other reasons why I'm that high is because of like his really observant mind. Like he looked at patterns uh, on uh, turtles and t tortoises, as well as like the beaks of different birds. He drew them all and uh, compared them, and then uh, eventually mapped it all together. That like uh, the the animals were adapted to the island that, that they lived in. Like, their, their beak type was different due to the type of food present. So, like, his really observant mind on these animal interactions and these animal features uh, kind of made, made it for me to put him that high. Yeah. 
Uh, so th- our categories, uh, like uh, as a reminder, were uh, like contributions to science, contributions to society, and difficulty of discovery. And so I think by contributions to society, like Darwin is a uh, undoubtedly extremely high. I mean, like his uh, ideas of evolution were like really influential. Like not even just in like society, but in like a uh, like even in like politics and like uh, in like philosophy. And in contributions to science, obviously, he would be incredibly high. As he like basically created an entire new field of biology, but I feel like his difficulty of discovery was like was not that high because I mean at the same time that he like sent his paper, uh, someone else had written uh, Alfred Russell Wallace like he had also discovered the theory of evolution, is ready to publish a paper on it. So I feel like that's why I didn't put him as high as you. Yeah, but uh, I argue that like his book on the origin of species is what really got evolution evolution to the modern world like it kind of got it involved and made it significant just because of how he communicated his ideas and the types of like observations he had but uh even though like wallace he's like a really underrated scientist as well i still think like for centuries humans could not answer the question of like where we where we come from and his like really observant mind through like just uh, five years of going around the world and like observing every single organism he saw drawing it all together like his persistent persistence kind of makes it for me to put him that high but uh it's a because it's like a respectable argument that's true the origin of species as you said is like an excellent book like it's still read today even though it was written hundreds of years ago and like darwin had a special ability to like communicate his ideas like even if they were very academic to like common people who had no knowledge of science which is pretty incredible and then uh for round number four now so I said Galileo. So Galileo was an Italian scientist, like who many people have called the father of modern physics and the father of modern astronomy. His theories were really like revolutionary and they served as the groundwork for many inventions and many future discoveries. Galileo made a lot of inventions himself, including a groundbreaking telescope, many compasses, and a thermoscope, which is a device that measures changes in temperature. He also observed a variety of astronomical phenomena for the first time, including Jupiter's moons, Saturn's rings, uh, the phases of Venus and sunspots. And like aside from all the science stuff, Galileo is famous for his conversations with the church over his strong support for heliocentrism. And so I put him, I put Galileo this high because I feel like all of physics, like after him, was built on Galileo, like Newton, uh, and beyond that even like Einstein, like they were all like uh, built on a foundation from Galileo. And his inventions, like the telescope, and like his astronomy, like this really like uh, extended our, hum- our humans like general knowledge of like where we fit in the universe. Yeah. So I also have my number four. So I just I just like to mention the stuff that you didn't mention. So his free fall experiment was kind of revolutionary too. At the time, everybody thought like heavier objects would fall faster, but uh, that discovery alone is like. A genius of his mind that he like discovered that uh, objects with different mass masses would fall at the same rate. It later contributed to like Newton's theory of uh, gravity later on, as well as his discoveries about speed and velocity. His principle of relativity that like uh, scientific formulas should be the same across all reference frames was later used by Einstein, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, his, he had some work with, related to inertia as well and pro- projectile motion. Uh, even like pendulums and hydrostatic balances, he had some work with, related to that. Uh, his his uh, astron- astronomic uh, discoveries were pretty significant as well, as you mentioned, because he proved like that other planets uh, also had like moons and objects rotating around them, kind of disproving the idea that Earth was the center of the world. If uh, If things were orbiting around other bodies the earth would definitely not be the center of the world his book was later banned by the catholic like church and uh he had it, it was in a pretty big feud with them try trying to prove to them his theories uh he kind of also uh observed the kepler supernova uh proposing that it was distant distant stars that, that were responsible for the phenomena and rejecting the idea of the immutability of heavens proposed by Aristotle, which was like accepted for like 
two thousand years, and he's kind of credited for like starting the scientific method, like experimenting at at higher levels. And so for that alone, I think he should be ranked uh, pretty high. As you mentioned, Einstein called him the fa- the father of uh, modern science. So yeah, that's why I also have Galileo this time. Yeah, as you said, I totally agree that the、uh, the idea that like two different objects with different masses will fall at the same rate is a pretty incredible discovery. Like I remember when I was in school, like we saw the video, we saw videos of like、uh, Neil Armstrong's famous experiment on the moon, where he like、uh, put a feather in the ball and had them fall at the same rate. It was like a very like mo- like well known experiment in general. And also like Galileo, him and Newton, like they were pioneers of the scientific revolution in the 1600s. Which like basically created like a the like the foundation for the industrial revolution, like modern inventions, technology in general.、And、then uh, then number three, me and you have a pretty big difference. I said、uh, Aristotle, and、uh, you said Pasteur, so I'll go first. So Aristotle was arguably the first scientist ever, and he basically created the European tradition of science, like as we know it. And he was also incredibly influential in the Islamic tradition of science. The translation of Greek books, and a lot of his theories were not even replaced for thousands of years. Like、uh, basically, his ideas were stated as fact for a long time until the Renaissance and Enlightenment. And another reason I put Aristotle here is because of how vast his breadth of work was. Like he wrote books on meteorology, biology, zoology, and more. And but his strongest and most influential works were in the field of logic, where he developed the logical methods that thousands of scientists after him would use. And like during all of ancient medieval history, Aristotle's theories were just considered as like facts. He was considered、uh, the poet Dante,、uh, famous in literature in Italy from the medieval era,、uh, said that Aristotle was the master of those who know. Just shows like how influential his work then, and so his sheer like influence on like a, sh- a whole like lot of the world, and his breadth of work across a variety of subjects, like as well as like his rules of logic. And、uh, he was a pioneer of the scientific method as well. Like all of this makes him, in my opinion,、uh, significant enough to deserve a spot in the top three. So, this is where I would、uh, disagree with you a lot. So, Aristotle, there is no doubt that he was very influential. Perhaps like the most influential human being before the 1600s, as his ideas were the main accepted ideas for like 2,000 years almost in all.、Uh, Cultures such as Islamic, Christian,、uh, and er- everything else. So、uh, even like I, I read that like in Islamic tradition, they call him the first teacher. So that's how significant he was. However, this is th- this is where I would disagree with you. I disagree with you on th- on categorizing him as like a scientist. Like I think he he called himself a natural philosopher, and I, and I, I agree because he never used a scientific method. Like of experimenting anything, he kind of observed phenomena and、uh, reported on them. He had some. Dis- he had his. I have like a list of his successes and failures that I would like to mention. So his successes was systematically observing biology. Like I think as a biologist, he was probably pretty good. He had some like great zoological concepts.、Uh, he had like books r- written about like rayfish, octopus, different phenomena. He attempted to classify animals, like the first person to att- attempt to classify animals. He had some、uh, discoveries related to like botany and plants.、Uh, his lo- logic, like、uh, just like proposing methods of logic, was pretty significant as well. And also geology, like the first person recorded to like make geologic observations. However, his failures are pretty significant as well, in my opinion. He kind of his failures kind of like. Stop the progress of science for a long time, because、uh, he had an idea that like four elements were the responsible for the world, like fire, uh, air, uh, water, and like soil, I think, or like ground, earth, and、uh, his idea of, like soul,、uh, his descriptions of motion, like basically everything he said about physics was wrong.、Uh, <laughs> Yeah, like everything, like just just how just how he described motion,、uh, he had to later be rejected by Newton. His、uh, his proposals about astronomy were all rejected later by Galileo. He he was like basically the father of the Earth-centered model 
model that was later rejected by Copernicus and Galileo. And it's not like, also like some people at this time, as you mentioned, like Archimedes, achieved some like real scientific results, such as the law of buoyancy, or like Pythagoras, the law, the, the like Pythagorean theorem and his mathematics, Hipparchus, Ptolemy, like all of those people, I think like uh, achieved some like more scientific results. So like, as a philosopher, Aristotle is probably like, like my number one as well. As a scientist, though, I would have him like around like number fifteen. So that's why they didn't have him in my top ten. Yeah, that's a good point on like uh, his number of ridiculous inaccuracies. But uh, I think that like it's good to see him in context. Like his uh, teacher, basically or, like mentor, was Plato, who believed that truth was like an abstract thing that like you can't really find like truth through observation and like experimentation. And, like Aristotle. Like his entire like field of uh, philosophy or like uh, primitive science was that truth was something that was concrete and that can be found through like observation and experimentation. That's why I, I like to put him pretty high because I feel like he was the father of the idea of science. I I still disagree with that because uh, like what you mentioned is kind of like philosophy to me. Like, I would put Thales as the father of science just because he rejected the idea of, like, uh, like supernatural and mythological phenomena being responsible for the world and kind of said that, like, the laws of nature are responsible. And also, like, I think it's, like, like some people at this time achieved some uh, actual, like, uh, scientific results in their fields, such as astronomy that have, like, it's kind of more significant to me than Aristotle, but like as a philosopher and like his influence is generally like very high because uh, his his school of thought is the main school of thought for centuries later on through the Middle Ages, and even in politics he, he was a mentor of Alexander the Great, uh, which we like covered in our Conquerors episode. So uh, I still respectfully disagree on this decision. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a valid argument. Okay, at number three, I have Louis Pasteur. He's known for his dis- uh, discovery of vaccination as a thing. He discovered the vaccines for rabies, anthrax, and uh, another disease as well. Uh, that discovery alone saved many lives later on. Uh, he also discovered microbe fermentation. He's kind of the father of microbiology. Uh, his uh, discovery of pasteurization as a, as pr- as a way to preserve food such as milk and wine later became really important in preserving human health uh and hygiene and like he's like basically the founder of modern hygiene health and medicine his idea of germ theory as a way to explain disease that like disease are not caused spontaneously but by microbes uh that come from other microbes is pretty significant basically uh this basically like discovering where human disease come from which is the foundation of medicine. We kind of just try to solve this disease now. Uh, and it, it, yeah, he disproved spontaneous gen- uh, generation, as Jerry said uh, uh, before, which kind of later uh, went into the idea of uh, evolution. As a, as a chemist, he was responsible for the idea of molecular uh, bases of asymmetry of crystals, and uh, he also is responsible for, for like discovering optical isomers. So since his discovery of vaccination and like germ theory is pretty significant to modern medicine and health, uh, and that like many people today in society are alive because of his like uh, vaccinations and like modern medicine, uh, I put him at number three. I think even though it might not have been like as hard as like a Einstein level uh, modern physics just to like discover these things. It's so significant in uh, preserving human life that it should be in top three, in my opinion. Then for number two and number one, we both have the same two people. Uh, so Einstein for number two. Uh, you want to start on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Einstein is the pioneer of modern science. Uh, one of the reasons he's ranked this high is just because of the genius of his work. Like, considering the genius of his work, it would probably rank number one. Just due to, like, the immense amount of mental experimentation, mental, like, 
uh, and like real world experimentation needed to like prove his phenomena. So he proposed the idea of special and general relativity, uh, basically saying that uh, at at high speeds, New- Newtonian classical mechanics does not hold, like at, at speeds around the speed of light. Also, uh, just just that like from different reference frames, electromagnetic radiation would still be the same. Uh, so that's that's his idea of re- relativity, and using that he proved time dilation, length contraction, e equals m c squared, the most like famous equation in science. Uh, his his work kind of was related to it- the atomic bomb as well, like proposing to the then U S president F D R that uh, the Nazis were uh, developing a nuclear weapon, so they should too. He, his influential. In the fact that atoms and molecules are accepted uh, today, d- due to his explanations of Brownian motion, capillary attraction, and critical opalescence, uh, Brownian motion is like random motion of particles suspended in the medium. He statistically described that, which later led to atoms being a proven thing. He won a Nobel Prize in 1921 for the photoelectric effect. Basically, the basis of quantum theory stating that discrete amounts of energy or quantas uh, are present and that like when photons hit uh, an atom, like uh, uh, like electrons would uh, gain or uh, and then uh, when they would lose energy, they would release a photon. And uh, also that like he kind of rebrought back the particle theory of light making uh, the particle wave dual theory the accepted uh, model later on. Yeah, so uh, I totally agree on everything. And like, yeah, so basically 50% or like half of modern physics was pretty much founded by Einstein. So modern physics is basically divided into relativity and quantum mechanics. And the theory of relativity was proposed and like designed by Einstein. And beyond that, Einstein also worked in like the other half, quantum mechanics, significantly as well. And uh, he basically like created new rules of physics that superseded the laws that had stood for 300 years that Newton made. And so uh, in 19- his like uh, rest of work is also astonishing. Like in 1905 alone, it's called his Miracle Year or Annus Mirabilis. He published four different incredibly important theories on special relativity, the photoelectric effect, as you mentioned, uh, Brownian motion, and the famous mass energy equivalence or e equals mc squared which has become so famous that like tons of people like know the equation e equals mc squared like not, not even knowing what the letters mean like as you said he was like an incredibly like genius person as well he was very intrinsically intelligent he was known for how fast and how effectively he could solve problems and he was so intelligent that his brain has been preserved by neuroscientists so they can study what he made him that way and yeah so like in our english vocabulary like, his last name, Einstein, has turned into a type of, like, uh, denoter of intelligence. Like, if you call someone an Einstein, like, you're, you're remarking their intelligence. It just shows, like, how uh, influential he's been in the modern world. Yeah, and also, uh, yeah, let me finish, like, his uh, scientific work, and then I'll explain why else I also have him there. So... Uh, he al- is also responsible for the Bose-Einstein matter, like being discovered. Uh, he kind of discovered that light is self-propagating and discredited the idea of ether, an idea that was around for like 300 years since Newton's time. Uh, he uh, he kind of used Mercury's orbit and some particles in the Earth's a- atmosphere to like prove his idea of special relativity. But like his most genius work, in my opinion, is general relativity where he joined space and time as a continuum, added time as a as the fourth dimension, and described that like acceleration slash gravity uh, causes curvatures in space and time. These ideas could not be experiment experimentally like uh, proven till like much later after his death, but they were all proven, proving that like without even like real world data, his mental experimentation was so powerful that he created super accurate theories. He basically like the re- the only experiment he basically did was uh using uh light curvature uh, around an eclipse. Uh, he also kind of predicted gravitational waves and black holes 
both of which were discovered later on. Like gravitational waves were the most recent one discovered in 2015. Uh, and also he kind of worked on wormholes as well. He had a theory about gyromagnetic effect, which is the change in magnetic moment, uh, uh, which causes bodies to rotate. And he even created a, the Einstein refrigerator, which was an absorption refrigerator with no moving parts, constant pressure, and the heat source, only if, well, like one heat source to operate. So like, and also la- lastly, he's responsible for the idea of stimulated emission, which la- later uh, contributed to the uh, invention of lasers, which would now be used in, like, in everything, like, like barcode readers and stuff. So the other reason why we have him this high is because of his like cultural impact. As you mentioned, his last name is synonymous with the word smart now. And also, like, he was a Jew during Nazi Germany who immigrated to the U.S. and was an awkward, like, kind of person as well. Uh, not wearing socks, playing violins. Uh, he was, like, also famous for his, like, humanitarian and peace efforts, as well as being proposed to be the first uh, president of the state of Israel. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, his cultural impact was vast. Like, some people on our list... They were just like a minor people during their own time. Albert Einstein was like incredibly famous and popular, like when he was alive. Like he wrote many works, like that were popular, like even among non-scientific readers. Like he wrote about even politics, I think. And yeah, yeah. So, also, yeah. he had a couple failures, but uh, they were still like respectable. Like he made an effort to like describe uh, the expansion of the universe uh, discovered by Edwin Hubble. Uh, his uh, idea was kind of disproven later on, his, like his equation, but still he made a significant effort. He later called that his biggest blunder. And in his like late stages of life, he tried to unify field theory. Uh, like, like he tried to unify field theory, basically joining gravity and with the other three forces, uh, which did not prove successful. And also he had like some, some series of debates with Niels Bohr about quantum mechanics where his ideas that like nature does not play dice uh basically kind of going against the idea of like randomness and quantum mechanics later being discredited so those are his failures which kind of uh makes him not number one on our list as well yeah and so now transitioning to number one uh, we have both have isaac newton so this is an english mathematician and physicist who is probably the world's best known most influential and greatest scientist of all time. Like, even people who have no knowledge of science, like, isolated regions of the world, like, they know the name Isaac Newton. His exploits and discoveries have become part of humanity's, like, universal culture. Like, there's always an iconic story of him discovering gravity under an apple tree. And Newton has developed a revolutionary reflecting telescope, which was the first one ever designed for practical use. It was very critical to the future success of the English Royal Society, and he also pioneered the field of optics with his detailed theory of color. In his book Principia, or officially the uh, Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica, or the Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy, uh, he expounded his three laws of motion and his theory of gravity, along with many other revolutionary concepts, uh, just remaking physics in total. And the book is often considered the most important book in science because of how many uh, like concepts it elucidated. And it's sometimes called one of the most important books ever written. And he famously also developed cal- calculus. He was uh, big in mathematics as well. Around the same time as Gottfried Leibniz. He's created detailed explanations for a vast variety of physical phenomenon, including planetary motion, uh, trajections of comets, and more. Now, ultimately, I'd say his work in physics and math laid the foundation for every scientist that came after him, and a ton of modern technology as well. Like, as I mentioned with Galileo, uh, Newton and Galileo like basically created the, like created the like groundwork for the industrial revolution to happen with all the technology inventions that came with it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I also put Newton as number one, as you mentioned, his idea of universal gravitation, using uh li- like early discoveries by Kepler and Galileo, was pretty significant. Uh, even today, as we send like rovers to Mars and like spacecraft to like Saturn and stuff, we we use uh, Newtonian mechanics and or Newtonian orbital mechanics to uh, do that. 
like he basically he he basically like used all the data available then to kind of do orbital mechanics as well like uh there's a story about him with Haley's comet where uh he basically like had a super accurate uh, representation of his orbit just using his his own physics his laws of motion are pretty significant as well disproving the ideas of aristotle uh before him uh he has the idea of uh, the empirical law of cooling uh which is pretty significant later on as you mentioned the reflecting telescope the uh, newtonian fluid uh his, so that's his work in fluid mechanics as you mentioned his work in optics his math work is pretty significant as well basically developing the de- developing the power series the binomial theorem finding a way to find roots of functions cubic plane curves all of that uh he also worked as an alchemist and a uh, theologian uh which were his like more uh strange fields of work uh as a, as a public figure he was a president of the royal society and later became the royal mint even being threatened to be executed later on uh and uh lastly i would like to like just tell two of his quotes which are pretty significant and like sources of wisdom for anyone who wants to venture into the scientific field so the first quote is if i have seen further it is by standing on the shoulder of giants basically uh just a, just a humble way of accepting that science is a group phenomena like the human colossus of knowledge is not built by one person but by a person like developing every knowledge that's been uh, before him and his most interesting code in my opinion is this one i seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore and diverting myself in you and then uh, in the now and then finding a smoother pebble or a pretty, prettier shell than the ordinary whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me basically suggesting that even though he had significant discoveries this is just the beginning of like the human venture into the scientific field which was later proven by by all the uh all the theories later discovered uh using his his uh, his science yeah that's really a pretty phenomenal quote and like i have a few fun facts about newton's personal life uh, like one fun fact is that like he was incredibly a uh, like an antagonistic person to have as an enemy like uh, he was very like controversial during his time he got into many fights with uh, people like leibniz and robert hooke and like this is kind of funny like the quote you mentioned about standing on the shoulders of giants uh, there's a like a popular theory that a uh, the double meaning of that remark was to be a sarcastic like attack on robert hooke for being short and like hunchback <laughs> and then uh, another interesting fact is that he died a virgin and uh, he never married his entire life he was like extremely devoted to science and also he was like a in his later life he like kind of shifted away from science he moved towards more alchemy chemistry and uh, theology like he wrote a lot of papers later in life about uh, his conceptions of like christianity his yeah. unique beliefs about like religion as well as and- his like ideas about trying to find the philosopher stone and yeah he was like a very interesting human being yeah and on orthodox christian for sure so uh you want to go into the honorable mention list now yeah sure so both of us like kind of struggled to make our list like it took a while to like narrow it down so we have a let's go quickly so can we all right you can start all right so first uh i have johannes kepler he was responsible for uh basically like uh the planetary motion stuff that was later used in Newton's laws of gravitation he found out that like the moon is responsible for tides uh also like just just like his ideas of planetary motion his three laws are pretty significant uh deducing that like uh all planets have uh, elliptical orbits and uh yeah they were, they were they were like used later on in uh orbital mechanics but yeah he also had some work in like mathematics showing how l- logarithms work he proved the inverse square law of light intensity uh he had a he had like a he had like star catalogs working as an assistant of another honorable mention on our list Tycho Brahe 
an astronomer. He improved the refracting telescope as well. So he's, he's been described as the father of celestial physics. I had him at my number 12, so he was pretty close to making my top 10 list. Yeah, Kepler was pretty influential on a lot of scientists on our list as well. Then I, I then next we have Henry Cavendish. He was an English scientist in the 1700s and 1800s who was important for his discovery of hydrogen. He called it inflammable air. And uh, he also like worked with uh, Stephens Antoine Lavoisier. And he researched the composition of atmospheric air, just generally a lot of chemistry stuff. Yeah, mechanical theory of heat and also finding out Earth's density and later its mass was pretty significant as well. Yeah, incredibly impressive. A, yeah, a pretty underrated scientist. And then later on, they have Mendelea. He needs no like explanation. He, he's the guy that put the periodic table of elements together, also predicting some other elements that later became true. Uh, just like finding this pattern of nature is pretty significant. Okay, next we have Ernst. Yeah, next we have Ernest Rutherford, who was like influential in radioactivity. He came up with the concept of a half-life. He discovered the uh, element radon as well. He also discovered the uh, the nucleus of an atom with his famous experiment with alpha particles and the and the like gold ring. Yeah. And then next we have Al- Alessandro Volta, who discovered the uh, he basically invented the uh, electric battery. He had some research in electrochemistry as well. And uh, yeah, his discovery became pretty significant later on. He's also known as a famous chemist, so he deserves to be in this spot. Next, we have Robert Hooke, who we mentioned with his conflicts with Newton. He was a pretty good scientist in his own right. Uh, he discovered the concept of a cell with his microscope. And he also developed some phys- some theories in physics like Hooke's law. Yeah, the Hooke's law for springs is pretty, and like harmonic motion is pretty significant. Yeah, so yeah. next we have. Wilhelm uh, Röntgen, uh, the German scientist who discovered X-rays. Next, we have Ohm, who was a scientist who created Ohm's law, incredibly important in electricity, electrical engineering. And next, we have Enrico Fermi, responsible for creating a nuclear reactor. And then we have Pascal, who was very important in a lot of mathematics. He made Pascal's triangle and developed a lot of concepts related to pressure. Yeah, the, he was like a pretty famous scientist regarding pressure. Let, next, we have Linnaeus, uh, the guy who created taxonomy, the idea of like classifying organisms, which is pretty significant today in biology. Yeah, then Rosalind Franklin, who uh, through her work with Watson and Crick, but mostly her own work, uh, developed the uh, structure of DNA. Yeah, and then next up, we have Niels Bohr. Uh, he was basically the father of quantum mechanics, uh, coming up with the idea of co- complementarity that like particles if you like measure them uh you cannot measure another of their properties because of like how small they are and stuff and uh it was pretty uh, significant also coming up with the idea of like energy shells and having a model of the atom yeah, he was one of the most important scientists who like debated with einstein over quantum mechanics yeah one of the most important of the 20th century I yeah mean, for sure yeah then we have max planck who explained black body radiation famous physicist and he proved energy was quantized, which is a uh, Planck's law. Pretty important in both chemistry and physics. Yeah, uh, pretty significant quantum mechanics. Later on, we have uh, Copernicus, uh, one of the first people to uh, come up with the idea of heliocentrism and rejecting the old idea that Earth is the center of the of the world. Next, we have Stelius, who was a Greek philosopher who famously shifted away from the idea that everything can be explained by the gods or mythology and shifted towards a more science-based approach that would be used by people like Aristotle. He had a famous belief that uh, everything came from water. Uh, yeah, so next up we have Nikola Tesla, pretty famous scientist and inventor known for his uh, inventions in electricity like uh, and like the AC current and like his discoveries in that field as well as like even proposing the ideas of uh, Using electromagnetic radiation for long distance work, having like RC boats and even like uh, cell like cellular communication, which later became true. Next, we have Ibn Sina or Avicenna, who was uh, very important in medicine. He wrote a medical textbook that was used in Europe for 400 years, and he also did a lot of work in other fields. Uh, very famous Islamic era scientist. Yeah, uh, yeah, he wrote the book uh, Ganud, and uh, later on we have. 
Al Khwarezmia. Uh, he was the Persian Muslim scientist who came up with uh, uh, algebra, like some al algebraic concepts called the father of algebra. And the word algorithm is also derived from his name because he was the first one to like describe uh, algorithms. And uh, next up, we have Alexander Fleming. You can talk about him. Yeah, Fleming was important in medicine as well. Uh, he discovered like a lot of antibiotics and he made the first penicillin, I believe. Uh, which was incredibly important. It's like saved like thousands of lives in the yeah. uh, 1800s. Yeah, as an inventor, like like his inventions uh, of penicillin is probably like top ten inventions of all time, just because of the amount of, amount of lives he saved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So next up, we have Wagner, who basically discovered continental drift, that like our continents today uh, are not where they were like earlier. Uh, coming up with the idea of Pangea and stuff. Next, we have Otto Hahn, who discovered nuclear fission. Uh, you you want to talk about the next one as well? Yeah, George Lemaitre discovered uh, the Big Bang. And uh, Linus Pauling, he came up with the idea of electronegativity and stuff, as well as some research about valence electrons, and also coming up with the alpha helix representation of proteins. Pretty significant biologists and chemists kind of created a uh, field of quantum chemistry. Yeah, he was probably the most important scientist of like the last like 30 or 40 years. Yeah, he was also a big friend of Einstein's, just a fun fact. Yeah, I think he was like the first person to win the same Nobel Prize twice or something. Something like that. Alright. And then, uh, so yeah, what can we learn from like all of these scientists that we've mentioned? Like both our top 10 and our honorable mentions. Like they all had a, an outstanding like work ethic along with a a lot of curiosity about the world like their inventions like drove the world like through the through into the future so like as the futurist if you want like the world to progress technologically to an even greater extent it's important to remember the lessons of these scientists to like replicate them yeah as you mentioned like einstein uh had a picture of Faraday on his wall he just he kind of said he stood on the shoulders of maxwell so if Big scientists in the past used uh, these scientists as a, uh, like, uh, as like motivation and foundation of their work to succeed. We can also use them as motivation and use their work as foundation of our work to improve technologically and improve the condition of human life. Like as we mentioned, like Faraday's uh, creations of uh, the electric motor and generator, Pasteur's like creation of pasteurization and vaccines. And, uh, yeah, like, all of those are pretty significant, uh, as well. Yeah, hopefully the coming century will yield even more great scientists who will, uh, advance humankind. Alright, so, that's all for today. We'll see you all on the next episode of The Futurist. Thanks for watching, and go subscribe. See you.